Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst, and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Throughout the Gospels, we don't necessarily get a strong sense of the personality or the inner lives of many of Jesus' disciples, with the impetuous Peter being one clear exception. For many of the others, we just get glimpses. There are these episodes that give us a window into who they were and what they were like. And yet this episode we get about Thomas, it seems somehow to, somehow to catch the imagination. It seems to tell us more about him than it says. While all of the others are gathered together, Thomas is away. The Lord appears to them and Jesus says, Peace. Peace be with you. And he shows them his hands and his side. And then Thomas gets back. Maybe he went out for food because everyone else had to stay in. So he comes back with the groceries. And his friends tell him this extraordinary thing. This incredible thing. And Thomas doubts. And I wonder why. It could be that he's a kind of proto-skeptic, someone who needs to have the evidence right in front of his face. I think that's how he's often understood in, in our kind of skeptical world. Or maybe he's kind of sad and envious. Like, why would Jesus appear when I'm not there to be a part of it? 
But I think there's something else that we also need to consider. I wonder if Thomas was simply afraid and what a normal reaction that would be. It was just three Sundays ago, the week before Palm Sunday, that we heard the story of Lazarus. Maybe you remember. Jesus hears that his friend Lazarus has died and decides to go and raise him, knowing that he would be also going to his own death. And then Thomas, at that time, says to his fellow disciples, let us also go to die with him. He's ready to go to go up to Jerusalem with Jesus and die. And yet, when it comes down to it, on Good Friday, when his life is really on the line, what does he do? He runs away. He lets his master, his lord, his friend, die a brutal, and humiliating death, and he is nowhere to be found. And he knew that in a way, he was responsible. Thomas was as aware as anyone of the depth of his own lowly humanity. He was as aware as anyone of how far short his good intentions could fall. He knew he was a sinner and that he deserved whatever punishment might be handed out to him. So when Thomas hears the others tell him of the news of Jesus' resurrection and that what Jesus offered them when he came was peace, He probably thought, this is too good to be true. Is this for me too? He probably wondered. This love, this mercy, is it for me too? After my sin, after I abandoned you, is it for me too? So the next week, Jesus comes through the locked doors to meet him, and he says to Thomas, look here. Look here. Look at my hands. Look at my side. It's for you. Sure, Jesus died because of Thomas's sin, because of your sin, my sin, the whole weight of human depravity and misery is what he bore on the cross. But the extraordinary thing is that he also died for Thomas, for you and me, for our sake. Pope Francis tells us that Jesus Christ is the face of the Father's mercy. Jesus' merciful love rescues each one of us from our slavery to sin and death and brings us peace, brings us back to the embrace of the Father. No matter the sin we struggle with, or maybe there's a weakness that we've had put in front of our face because of quarantine and isolation, no matter what it is, We pass through his hands, wounded for us, to go to the Father. While he was doubting, Thomas demanded to see Jesus' wounds, to touch them. But I wonder if he was actually startled to see them when Jesus came. If we imagine what heaven looks like, I think that A lot of the time we imagine a place where all of that pain and suffering and sin is undone. What Jesus' wounded hands and side tell Thomas and us 
is that resurrection isn't about going back. Going back to some old life before any of this happened. It's not all undone. Jesus isn't going back on the road with his 12 buddies after this. Resurrection means going through death to the other side, to a new kind of life. That's a place where wounds aren't erased, but they are transformed. I wonder if almost all of us are wishing that this thing we're living through right now could be undone. I find myself asking all the time, when are things just going to get back to normal? I liked the way that things looked in December and January and February. When can we go back to that? We might be asking, is this Easter also for us? Is it for us too? Right now, Jesus is saying to us, as well as to those first disciples in the upper room, peace. Peace be with you. Today we celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday. In the second reading today, St. Peter says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. We may not always think of it this way, but Easter is the great feast of God's mercy. Despite all of our rebellion against God, all of our pain and anxiety, God sends his son to say, peace be with you. He shows us his hands and his side. He says, this love, this mercy is for you. It's not going to turn back the clock to undo all that's been done. But God is performing a work of resurrection in our time. All of this will be transformed. His love and mercy and resurrection are for us.